Okay, so basically the title says it all. Um, I wrote a uh, Python script basically that does some cool stuff and we'll talk about it for the next 20 minutes. Um, the obli obligatory, you know, about me slide. Um, bottom line is this is a recon village, so my name and Twitter handle are up there. Um, you guys don't care who I am, but you guys can look me up if you want to. I'm pretty approachable. Um, so basically, uh, I did a lot of network defense for the last couple of years doing, uh, let's say, like enterprise size networks. Uh, we ran into a lot of issues. So you get a lot of syslog data, you get a lot of uh, sourcing data, you get PCAPs, you get NetFlow data. And the problem is you get inundated with all this data and you, there's nothing really out there to do anything with it. There's a lot of enterprise solutions that are getting better, uh, but they're really, really expensive, really high learning curve, and you can't play with them at home because a lot of these guys don't, wa we're, we're not walking around with licenses for these half a million dollar software. Um, I came across uh, specifically focusing on like Internet of Things devices since that's like the new hotness right now. Um, and I'm a big fan of like Raspberry Pis and uh, cheap, affordable, like uh, approachable programming and tools. Uh, so Cable Labs posted a story a couple years ago basically saying that, uh, you know, NetFlow detection systems that seek to identify devices communicating with known command and control systems. So this is one of their primary means of detecting botnets and malicious activity on the internet using NetFlow traffic analysis. So kind of uh, my two cents, my, my plug to somebody else and more important than me is supporting my concept. Um, but then you have this little diagram down at the bottom. So what I like about this is you have uh, your botnets, you know, everybody kind of thinks that you're like, as an attacker, you're going from attacker to the attacked. Uh, but what I noticed doing a lot of NetFlow traffic analysis is the real issue that we have is the, uh, the devices on your network at home that have the ability to reach out to uh, the public internet and be compromised that way. So you don't have to have a vulnerability on an Internet of Things device like a fridge or whatever in your house. There can be a vulnerability on the database server in the cloud 100,000 miles away and that's how the attacker is actually getting access into your home network. Uh, and the only way you're going to detect that is through network traffic analysis. It's going to pass all your checks, it's going to be allowed through your firewall uh, and it's pretty hard to see with uh, normal syslog type stuff. Uh, so I wrote a, uh, basically a Python script. It's open source. Uh, it's all on GitHub. Um, and it basically aggregates a whole bunch of blacklists. So Firehole IP manages a whole bunch of databases that are updated pretty regularly depending on which ones you want. Um, some of them are huge, like uh, gigabytes worth of data. Some of them are really small. But the key here is that we're looking at like IP addresses. Um, so the next slide I'll go into NetFlow. But uh, it aggregates all these blacklists, um, does some um, open source intelligence gathering using Shodan, VirusTotal, and some other APIs and then it kind of builds a threat intelligence uh, dashboard that you can use to kind of see what's going on on your home network or your small home, small office network. Um, and then at one point I had an integration for a text message alert so I'd get a text message anytime my computer or a device on my network talked to a, a malicious IP address. Uh, I took it out because I ran out of uh, free API rules so feel free to add it back in if you want but you're going to have to pay for uh, API service for SMS. Uh, so for anybody that doesn't know, uh, NetFlow uh, is basically based on the five tuple. It's a Cisco proprietary uh, protocol but there's a lot of free and open source uh, similar protocols that use the exact same byte orders. Uh, but it captures the source destination uh, IP address, source destination port, and the uh, average size of the bytes for the session. So with that information you can see who you're talking to, who's talking to you, and how much traffic is going back and forth. Um, so that's NetFlow in a nutshell. Uh, the bottom left is the actual like parser that I used where I broke out the actual bytes of the packets uh, which is all being stored into a SQL database in the back end. Um, and once again going back to the beginning so there's not a whole lot of options out there but there are some options. So I'm sure you guys are familiar with like the commercial options like SolarWinds, uh, McAfee's got a lot of products, uh, really expensive. Then you have all the free options. So you have Elk and Security Onion which are really great. Uh, but they don't run on a Raspberry Pi or if they do run on a Raspberry Pi they run like crap. Um, so if anybody's used uh, massive databases or anything like that on a five dollar computer and has good success please let me know because I think everybody here in here would be interested. Um, so ELK is kind of another option. So Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. Uh, kind of the backbone of Security Onion. Uh, once again, doesn't work very well because of the data size and the database access is on a Raspberry Pi. Um, and then more reasons why I think my, my Raspberry Pi project was pretty neat. But uh, basically the, the recommended guidelines for a lot of those open source softwares are, you know, 8 gigabytes of RAM, 
uh, at least a dual core, pro preferably a quad core processor. Um, and then you're going to need to power it too. So like a lot of people don't consider that as like a cost. Uh, but I've lived in a couple different places around the country and I've experienced like electricity bills higher than you can possibly imagine. Uh, so anything I can do to not uh, plug something else into the network and run it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, works for me. Uh, so to summarize a lot of that, what I just said, you know, I'm looking for a low cost, low power, easy to configure, uh, integrates intelligence and it has a cool black hacker like interface. So we end up with the, the Raspberry Pi, uh, specifically the Pi Zero W because they're like five bucks uh, every couple months, ten bucks uh, not on sale. Uh, and then they got this Pi Zero stem, so if you haven't played with that, it's awesome. Uh, integrates, solders right onto the board, uh, allows you to use it as a storage device and power and uh, it's pretty cheap, it's like a dollar fifty or something like that from a lot of the uh, Raspberry Pi type stores. Uh, so we take a Raspberry Pi Zero W, Python, Intelligence, all for about 15 bucks plus 10 minutes worth of soldering and you have your own, you know, threat intelligence dashboard for your home network. Uh, and then to go into like the science behind it, so, and I use science loosely because it's not, I mean it's data science but it's not like data science. Um, this is the kind of process that I was working with. So first we collect the raw data, we get all our net flow traffic in and we parse it and we make sense of it and then we put it into a database. Uh, use SQLite as the database of choice because there's no extra services. You can copy paste it, you can upload it, you can share it, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, and then you do the analysis on the data. So that's where the firehole IP reputation comes in, Shodan queries, uh, virus total queries and anything else that you can possibly imagine. It's pretty modular and it's really easy to just add your own stuff. Um, results may vary of course but uh, and then visualize the data. So a whole bunch of database queries is pretty boring to look at. Um, and we you know we're in the 21st century so we want something with like colors and stuff. So I use Folium which is an awesome Python library to build uh, maps and graphs and anything that you can think of like data wise. Some Flask uh, because it's a really great, uh, I don't know, low resource intensive uh, interactive web dashboard. So I was told to use Django by some other people. Uh, Django is great but it's a little bit more involved to set it, set it up and manage it. Uh, Flask I can turn on, turn off real quick. Um, and the Alexa uses Flask and I was programming for Alexa at the same time. And then JavaScript. So, um, and then I share the information. So after you have all the information, uh, you know, what do you do with it, right? So we have a whole bunch of disparate people running these like servers all around the world. Um, that's where I got into Twilio, which was my SMS notification. So you can do SMS notification, email notification. Um, you can push your results back to Firehall. So another thing that I was working on was modifying it from looking at IP addresses that are bad to looking at patterns of behavior. So you have your like malicious ports, uh, you know, like if you see Telnet 4444, like your standard like um, botnet type ports, uh, you can start taking the people scanning your uh, public interface for those ports on the public internet and feeding those back into these threat databases so you can kind of build the bench and ha uh, share that information with the rest of the community. Uh, so this is a similar slide, just a little bit more detail. So uh, we have the raw data ingest. So if you guys aren't running like custom firmware on your router, it's pretty easy to set up. Uh, so you can get your own NetFlow uh, exporter. Uh, I run it on my uh, my LEDE router, so it's just an open WRT router running. Uh, I think it's like RFlow or Inflow. Uh, it saves all that in NetFlow version five because it's a lot less fields to parse through, and then puts it in a database. Um, does the analysis, visualizes it, and then sends it right back out to the community for uh, sharing that information. Uh, so this is uh, the code. Uh, pretty exciting stuff. Um, on the left, NetFlow collector. On the right, it's the IP databases and stuff like that that I'm pulling down from the internet. Um, and then you, we do some geolocation too. So if you haven't played around with IP geolocation, it's fairly accurate down to about the city level. Um, it's kind of hard to spoof uh, your IP locations, but it's not impossible. So it's a, it gets me a pretty decent results. Um, and then Shodan because I wanted to play with Shodan. Uh, Shodan has a great API if you haven't played with it. Uh, the free version gives you about three queries a second. Um, so I was able to basically run a thousand to one and a half thousand or about fifteen hundred uh, results a day. And it takes about ten, fifteen minutes. Uh, so right now the bottleneck's not the Raspberry Pi, it's these free APIs that are charging us. Uh, and then VirusTotal. Uh, VirusTotal has a really, really slow API. 
uh, it, everything came to a screeching halt. It was like two or three queries a minute. Uh, I talked to some virus total engineers while I was here. They said they'll speed it up. So if you want free API access to virus total, talk to somebody around here. Maybe they'll give it to you. I don't know. Results may vary. <laughs> uh, finally, the first slide with like a picture of the actual thing. Uh, so this is the the map that I built. Uh, it's black because that's what hackers do. Um, and you know, kind of like I was talking about with the showdown restrictions. So each one of these dots is based on you know the the color of the dots based on the density and the number of IP addresses from a given area. Um, and then you can zoom in further to actually see the details. So what it does is it takes the showdown results that you have and puts them into a little iframe so you can click on any of these dots and you can get like a rundown on exactly what's running, what open services are on that, who owns it sometimes, the uh, the uh, DNS resolution if there is one. Uh, what I was pulling in from VirusTotal is they maintain a database of the last hundred uh, DNS resolutions for a given IP address and then they can also do uh, malware analysis. So if you have a IP address associated with a piece of malware, you can get that information out of VirusTotal and you can actually see what malware may be running on these uh, potential botnet or scanning systems out on the public internet uh, using APIs. Uh, and the flask, so I don't know why I, I hid my IP address because it's home.evilbotnet and it resolves to the IP address. But uh, this is where I'm running it right now. Uh, this is using the flask, so it's basically a uh, interactive web interface so you can run number of queries, I added ports, uh, services, so you can kind of basically a database uh, manager if you will so you can view the raw data if you're into that kind of thing. Um, so as I'm going through this, right, so the next step obviously is that you have to like hack back or go back after the people that are going after you. Um, my employer won't let me talk about that so I'm not going to talk about that. But uh, the potential's there, right? So a lot of these devices, uh, I'd say 50% scanners and like script kitties on the internet. I get a lot of stuff from like University of Michigan. Uh, Shodan uh, scans me a lot. Uh, and a whole bunch of stuff from like DigitalOcean. So like, DigitalOcean must have really loose like hacking rules. I know AWS will kick you off really fast if you do any kind of like scanning without uh, authorization. Um, but you can take that information, like I mentioned, you can push it right back up into the uh, databases that you're pulling information from. So the chart in the middle is actually a chart from VirusTotal, uh, and you can, or sorry, uh, IP abuse database. And a uh, really easy way, it's like one line of code just to shoot that information right back up to them, basically confirm that these IP addresses are bad, good. Um, but it's, it's a good way to contribute back to the community. Um, and then potentially, if you felt like it, you could write a search exploit integration and uh, build your own exploits and weaponize the system if you wanted to. So that's basically it. Um, as I, men I didn't mention it before but uh, I'm not a full time programmer by any stretch of the imagination. So I did this as a way to learn how to program um, and I learned a lot throughout the process uh, but it's buggy as hell and it will have a lot of bugs in it. Uh, it's all up online so github.com slash evilbotnet. Um, please contribute, download it, tell me if it works, tell me if it doesn't, build your own, rip it off, do whatever you want. But uh, I really had a lot of fun building the project, talking about the project, and I think it works well for my situation. So I guess I have five minutes for questions. <laughs> <Woo. laughs>